Hello and welcome everyone to um, Corrective Works number 13. Uh, lucky number. Hey, um, we're doing functional Pilates this time. We're gonna do it mostly standing. So you do not even need a slippy, non-slippery mat. <laughs> you do not even need like a yoga mat or something. Uh, we will be lying on the floor at the end. So you might want to have a towel next to you so you can you know, push your, put your elbows on the towel or your knees if you need to bring the knees down. Otherwise, we're just going to start standing, walking on the spot, just mobilizing our big toe joint. You do know by now that I am obsessed with foot mobility as aging starts in the feet. And who would want to start aging in the feet? <laughs> so just roll over your big toe joint, march it out on the spot. Lift the heel as much as possible. So really imagine you're standing on high heels. So really lifting the heel. And then we're bringing those arms in. Which side? Whatever side feels good. So you want to reach out to the sky or ceiling. Hold on, it doesn't feel good. This feels much better. So whatever side feels good. You want to reach the arms out above the head to the sky or ceiling. Really lifting those rib cages. You want to bring some air, some light between those ribs. Yeah, you're <laughs> Make sure you drop the shoulders. And whatever feels good with the head, you can also swing the head from side to side. All right, enough of that. Bring those heels down, bend the knees some, and then swing those arms around your body. This is a typical Qigong movement. You might even want to slightly tap your kidney area. So just above your sacrum, just slightly with your hips. This is stimulating your kidneys a little bit, but you don't have to. I mostly would like you to mobilize the spine, rotate the spine, let go of those arms, let go of those shoulders. And if you're not getting too dizzy, you can swing the head side to side. Very nice. And this is also all a bit freestyle. So this beginning is just to come into your body, get into your feet get into your spine and then come into a slight temple pose so whatever feels good um, so that you don't slide you don't slip bring the weight or push your way to the outside of your feet heels are grounded big toe mount is grounded and then contract exhale inhale lift the chest Contract, release, rounding the spine and lifting again. Round the spine, lift it up again. Exhale, rounding. Inhale, lift the chin, lift the chest. Exhale, contract. Inhale, release. While you contract and exhale, pull your navel in. Round the spine as much as possible and inhale, release again. Very good. One last time and make sure you drop the shoulders. You don't want to engage those shoulders. So we had a little bit of a core engagement, exhaling contraction, pulling the navel in. Remember Pilates, we want to bring those two hip points together and zip those pens up. So you're basically engaging and lifting your pelvic floor and your transverse abdominals. So you want to bring, pull your navel in. So one of my favorite words is to bring. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so pull the navel in, zip up those pants, hip points together. They should feel really nice and tight for the next move, which is 
side swings. Just a little bend in the knees when you swing to the sides. One arm stays up, one arm drops, and you're swinging from side to side. Let the, let the head go, let the arm go, let the shoulder go, except for the one that's staying up. When you bend the knees, make sure they come to the outside, pointing to the toes and not to the inside. Very good. Feeling a little bit warmed up and mobilized. And if you do, come back together. Find a good spot, a good and stable spot so you can lift one knee, starting with one side, no matter what side. I want to grab this knee. Oof. First of all, push your heel down, outer edges, big toe mount. Then lift the heel as the hip, <laughs> lift this knee, anatomy. Lift the knee as much as possible, drop the hip. You don't want to lift, well, that hip. This is super difficult to keep your balance and it's overtoning our hips here. So lift the chest and then lift those arms. Just a few deep breaths here. <sighs> keep lifting those arms, drop the shoulders. You want to engage this foot. My foot is pointing. You could flex it or you could yogi toe it. Lift the chest, chin, gaze, stand tall, <sighs> pushing your heel into the ground and release. Now, just push this leg backwards, come into warrior three or airplane pose. Stay where you are. I'm gonna turn 90 degrees. And there we are in a balanced position, pushing our back heel backwards so the back leg is engaged. You can even try to turn that leg out without opening the hip. So I want you to keep your hip square to the ground, engaging the heel into the ground, outer edges, big toe mount. Whoop. Arms are either open to the sides or 90 degrees, nice shoulder opener here or little Anjali Mudra in front of the chest or arms to the front, whatever feels good, wherever you want to go. And then everyone bring the arms to the front, extend the arms forward, bend the back knee. You want to bring your nose, <laughs> you want to connect your nose with the knee and then push it all back again. Exhale. <sighs> Inhale, lengthen. Now, in order to stay in balance, focus something on the ground. Focus something on the ground, maybe half a meter in front of your toes. Otherwise, this whole balance job is not going to work. And extend. And one more time. And there we go. Come back up. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. March it out on the floor. We're gonna try this again. This feels so much better. So heel down, arm up. <laughs> whatever variation I was doing before, it wasn't this. So just do whatever feels good and don't always do what I'm doing. <laughs> It could be all wrong. That's the camera. <laughs> the camera makes you forget things <laughs> that you would do or know without the camera. <laughs> all right. Are you ready for the other side? Here we go. Balance on the other leg. Lift the knee. Really drop that hip. Both hips are parallel to the floor. Lift the knee. Then do something with this foot. Don't just let it out of your mind map. Put it into your mind map and do something with it. 
let go, lift those arms, benefit by lifting chest, gaze, chin, standing tall, one line from the crown of your head all the way, pushing into your heel down. How wonderful, how wonderful, sorry, standing tall can feel, right? When you really feel your weight on your heel, isn't that amazing? You just feel your bones stacked one on top of another. It's like no effort at all. Everything seems natural and perfect. Okay, enough talking. <laughs> Push that heel backwards. Come into warrior position. Stay here, 90 degree. Just so you can see what more of an adventure is there to come. So first of all, hips parallel to the ground. So you might need to close the hip a little bit. Shoulders parallel to the ground. Those arms to the side actually help to feel that you're parallel to the ground. But you can of course do your Anjali or your cactus position. And now flex the foot, push the heel away from you. Two deep breath. <sighs> Try to feel that feeling again of really being on the heel, really feeling stable through the heel. Wow. <sighs> this feels great. Then knee comes in, this knee can bend a little and then we stretch it all out again. And you do want to focus on one spot on the ground, half a meter in front of your toes, so you don't fall and your body knows where it is in space and time. <laughs> and in which universe we are. Hmm, right now we are in the, it starts burning in my standing leg universe. So we just do one more before we catch fire. And then coming up, shake it out. Ooh, freestyle, whatever feels good. You might even do a figure four stretch. Ooh for these piriformis butt cheeks. Little figure four. Oh yeah, good. Whew. Ready, for no <laughs> Ready for round number two? So you do want to change legs again, otherwise you'll feel the burn and you might even really catch fire. So other side, this leg can slightly turn out just so you're a little bit more stable because we're going sideways. So lift the other side to the side and we're coming into star pose. So it's basically like a warrior three, but to the side. So you wanna open those arms as much as possible. So the thumbs are pointing backwards and this foot is engaged. So you either wanna flex it or point it or yogi toe it. And then start to tip over without falling and you do want to stay in one straight line so those arms are open shoulders are down as much as possible those rotations in the shoulders will help you to lower the shoulders and just come as much as you can all the way to the sides all right we got way to go here so second exercise bring the knee in Hug the knee as much as you can and open back up. You do need to focus your gaze on a spot. Otherwise, probably your body will not be able to cope with the movement. So fix something with your eyes if you want to, like we did with the warrior three. You can point your foot and then flex your foot again. Point and flex or whatever feels good to you. Do that two more times. Last time. And then stay here, point your foot, come up a little bit and just lift the leg 10 times, nine, 
eight, let your shoulders go, seven, six, come on, let's do this, five, crunch, four, three, two, and that should be ten, if I didn't forget something, ooh, that side needs some stretching, come into your temple pose, get your elbow down on your thigh, and stretch it out. And flex your hand, push the hand away from you. Oof, that feels better. <laughs> All right, we're done with that side. That was it, two rounds, one side. Now we got one more for the other side. Are you ready? Are you staying with me? So change sides. You wanna bring that foot slightly out. You wanna turn the foot slightly out and start by simply tipping over a little bit. Then open those arms, star pose, this is called. So try to make a star with your whole body, shifting onto the heel, outer edges big mount. Ooh, open it, drop those shoulders, rotate those shoulders out, drop it. So first was easy, we just find our stance here, find it somewhere. All right, now do something with your foot. Point it, flex it, yogi toe it. All right, we got something to do with the foot. Now are you ready? <laughs> ready to go for it. Um, how about we do some knee hugging and stretching out? <sighs> how about this? Oof. And try not to dig your feet, dig your toes into the ground. I just caught myself digging my toes into the ground. That's not what we want. We want to keep the weight on our heels, outer ridges, and the big toe mount. And we do not want to over engage our toes, don't we? No, we don't. Oh. Ain't that lovely? Come on, let's do this two more times. And then we're coming to the big finale. Side crunches, come up a bit, point the toes. Here we go for 10, nine, relax those shoulders. Eight, standing tall, seven, six, breathe, five. Side crunches, you should feel the burn here. And add three more, got two more. Last one, ha, oh, that wasn't too bad. I think I forgot one. <laughs> well, if you got two ti 10 times, just stretch it out wonderfully. <sighs> All the way. Now we're coming down a little bit. You wanna come into Utkatasana, it's a yoga pose where we Keep the feet hip width apart, sitting backwards. You wanna bring those arms or hands next to your shoulders. And all we do here is release forward and then stretch those arms back out. Elbows come forward, stretch those arms back out. Elbows come forward. Stretch it back out. We're preparing for a nice forward fold. So we want to release our back. The erector spinae should let go a little, hopefully. So then come into forward fold, stretch those legs out. This hair is starting to get a little bit longish, but hairdressers are closed because of a virus. So push those heels down, outer edges, big toe mount, drop your head, drop your hair, whatever you have, probably loads of it at the moment, and let the shoulders go. You might want to drop one hip, bend one knee, drop the other hip, bend the other knee. Very good. Just bring your pulse down a little, stretch it out. And we're doing one more core engagement exercise here. Just one more. 
So I would like you to come onto your elbows. So we're getting onto all fours. All fours is always a good start. Then elbows down, sphinx position, shoulders are above your elbows, hands are parallel or arms are parallel, and then step backwards into elbow plank. Now push forward and push backwards. Crown of the head pushing forward, heels are pressing backwards. We do that 10 times. One, and pressing back. Keep breathing. So what do you do with your belly bottom? Suck it in. What do you do with the, <laughs> the hip points? Front hip points pulling together. What are you doing with the zip? This is a tight pant, so we're zipping up. Yes. Now, what's the crown of the head doing? Crown of the head pushes forward. What are the heels doing? Pushing backwards. I think we just got three more times. Whew. And then we're almost done. So push back into down dog on your elbows. Last exercise, you might even push the forehead down on the ground. Resistance against the head, slight resistance against the head is always good. So our head can find its direction. All the other parts of our body usually do have something they are either standing on or grabbing something or holding or pulling or pushing something, but our head doesn't. It's always up in the air and in the open and doesn't really know which way to go unless we wear a hat or a turban or something so we know which way is up, which way is down. All right, enough philosophy. Oh, sit back, enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. I think we did, did a, a really good workout. Enjoy your new stands, your new balance, your new arches of your feet. And I hope I see you all next time.